All right, so here's quiz four study guide. All right, number one, let's see, is the relation a function? What I do there is I scan across, I scan across my X values and I see a 12, four, seven, five, four. I see the two fours. I got a four as an input and another four as an input. And for one of the four inputs, I got a 14. And for the other four input, I got a one. And if you put in a four and you get a 14 and then you put a four in again and you get a one, that's not good, is it? Something's broken. So that's not a function. Okay. Something's broke. If you put in a four, you should get the same thing every time you put in the four. And then number two is the same question, but it's formatted differently. It's formatted in a mapping diagram. And you got a one, a three, an 11, and a 15, five, seven, two, four. Bless you. And I just look at the arrows, all right? And if you don't ever have one arrow going to two places, then you're okay. This is a function. Each input's got its own output. Now, like this, see that? If that was the case, and this one went to a five, and it went to a seven, well then it would not be a function. But in this case, we're all good, function. Number three, use the vertical line test to determine which graph represents a function. Vertical line test. Take your pencil. You hold it vertically on the left side of the graph and you slide it to the right. So right here, if you took a vertical line and you slid it this way, it's only going to touch the graph in one place. All right. So actually answer A there represents a function. Um, answer B is V-shaped. So if you put a pencil across there, it's going to hit here and here. That's not a function. Answer choice C is a vertical line. And once your pencil hits the vertical line, you're going to have all kinds of contact points here, everywhere. So that's not a solution. This is not a solution or a function. And then answer choice D is the circle. So if you took your pencil, you held it vertically and you slid it this way across this circle. When you got to right here, you're gonna hit the circle twice, not a function. So answer A is the only one that was a function in that picture. All right, so that takes us into the short answer. And we got a new number one. We're solving the absolute function and we're graphing the function. So we got a two absolute value of three X minus four plus seven equals negative nine. Subtract seven from each side. And we get 2 times 3x minus 4 equals negative 16. We're going to divide both sides by 2. Absolute value of 3x minus 4 is equal to negative 8. And that's a situation. X equals this Okay, so now since the absolute value is alone on one side of the on one side of the equal sign, we're going to rewrite so three x minus four
equals negative eight and three X minus four equals positive eight. There, there's something wrong here. This is no, there's no solution here. You can't have the absolute value of anything equal to a negative, right? Absolute values are the distance from zero to the number on the number line. And an absolute value can never be a negative. So it doesn't matter what this value is inside of here. It can't be a negative. There's no solution. And it looks like number two, the same thing happens. We got the absolute value of 4x plus 1 equal to negative 3. And again, you've got the absolute value of something. When it's just the absolute value on the left-hand side of the equal sign, and it's equal to a negative, that's no solution. Absolute values are always equal to a positive. Now, if these would have been positive numbers, then this, this is the way you're going to solve them, just like number three here. So we got three times the absolute value of four X plus three plus five equals 14. So we're gonna isolate this absolute value symbol, subtract five from each side. And then divide both sides by three. And we get the absolute value of four X plus three is equal to three. So now we rewrite it. And we rewrite it again, except we negate the right side. And now we got to solve it twice. So we get an X of zero or four X equals negative six and divide by four. X equals negative six fourths stays negative, but six and four are even they're divisible by two. So this becomes three over two. Those are your two solutions. Number four. We got four times the absolute value of three minus six X equal to four X plus three. Now the directions change a little bit for number four. It says to solve the equation, check for extraneous solutions. Make sure you check for your extraneous solutions. So we're going to divide both sides by four. These will cancel. Three minus six X equals, when you divide both sides by four, you have to divide everything on the right side by the four. So four X divided by four is X plus three divided by four is, you could use 0.75 or you can use three fourths. Now you rewrite, so it's three minus six X equals X plus three fourths. And then it's X minus six X equals you have to negate everything on the right side. You got to negate the whole right side. So it's negative X minus three fourths. Now we got to solve them both. Um, I'm going to add six X here. 
So three equals seven X plus three fourths. And then subtract three fourths. Three minus three fourths. It's probably like two and one fourth. That's equal to seven X. Going to divide both sides by seven. You get nine twenty eights. And we got to solve this one on the right side. I'm sorry, this isn't an X, is it? That should be a three. All right, so we get three equals five X minus three fourths. Add three fourths to each side. And this is three and three fourths equals five X and divide by five. So three and three fourths divided by five, that equals three fourths. All right. So now you have to check both of these. You have to go back to the original equation and you got to plug them both in and you got to see if they work. Okay. The one that works is the solution. The one that doesn't work is an extraneous solution. All right. So just, I'm not plugging them back in. I'm going to let you do that. So just maybe put a star to check each solution. All right, both of these inequality problems, five and six, are very similar to each other, so I'm just going to do one of them. Number five, we got the absolute value of 2x plus 10, and it is greater than or equal to 24. Since the absolute value symbol is by itself, we're going to rewrite. And when you rewrite it the second time, you got to do two things. You got to change the direction of the inequality and you got to negate the right side. So maybe put a note to yourself, change and negate. Two things have to happen on this second equation. You got to change and you got to negate here. Let me draw the arrow to this. So change that and negate that. And then you solve them both. Twenty four minus ten is fourteen. Divide by two. X is greater than or equal to seven. Subtract 10. Two X less than or equal to, what's that negative 34? Divide by two, X less than or equal to negative 17. All right, look now, we talked about this the other day. Pay attention to the graphs of your solutions as well. You got an X on the left, 
with an arrow going right, you got an X on the left with an arrow going left. All right. So what this looks like in a graph that the or is a solution, this negative 17 goes to the left and the positive seven goes to the right, the X goes in the middle. Actually, we're not even going to rewrite this one. We're not going to rewrite it. We're going to leave it just the way it is right there. Just make sure your graphs, because you have to choose a graph. When it says to solve and graph, um, you're supposed to solve and graph. So what this graph would look like, you got an X greater than or equal to seven. So here's seven. Greater than or equal to. Let's put the negative 17 on here. We're, we're greater than or equal to the seven. So we're closed. We're going to the right. We're less than or equal to the negative 17. So we're closed again, but we're less than. So we're going out here. Because you may have these same two solutions and then a graph that shades the middle. Okay. So just because you find an answer with these two solutions, don't pick it without checking all the other answers. Everybody understand that? It's how they try to fool you on multiple choice tests. They give you an obvious answer is answer A, but a better answer is answer C. Always got to choose the best answer. All right, and then you do number six the same way. That brings us to number seven. Make a mapping diagram for the relation. I'm going to order the um, inputs, least to greatest. Well, they already are. So here's your mapping diagram. You got a negative two, you got a negative one, you got a two. You got a negative two, you got a negative one, you got a two and a five. And then you'll see this a couple of different ways, but you're going to see the Y's put um, least. No, you're not. You're going to just see them all different ways. Five, seven, two, four. Let's put them in order. So we'll go uh, least to greatest. We'll go negative five, negative three, negative ten. Let's go this way. Three, negative two, negative three, negative five. You just got to make sure that your X's match your Y's. That's all. So this negative two goes with the negative five, doesn't it? So there. The negative one goes with the negative three. The two goes with a negative two, and the five goes with the three. Just make sure all your x's correspond to your y's. All right, number eight, it says to write the ordered pairs for the relation. That's just a matter of looking at a graph and writing the coordinates. But what you have to be careful of is that graph. Because you got a line and then a two line and then a four everywhere, right? So if a point and you've got points in between those points. So be careful because anything that aligns with this right here, that's a negative one and this is a negative two. And if you get a point that's in between them, that X value of that point is like negative one point. That's negative 1.5, okay? And if it corresponds to 
a point along the y-axis that is between the three and the four. On this y-axis, you've got a you got three that's about here and four that's here. And this is your two. And if it corresponds to this right here, this is like 3.5. All right. So just be careful when they skip values in those graphs, you have to be aware. There's something between the one and the two. That's 1.5. If up here it's between the three and the four, then it's 3.5. It's for your X's and your Y's. And then on, on number nine, it says find the domain and the range. Well, the domain, that's all your X values. The range, that's all your Y values. So for number nine, you're doing the same thing as number eight. Domain is your X, range is your Y. Number 10. What is the input of the given? What is the output of the given input? So you get the function of x equals negative 5x minus 3, 4, function of 3. That means we're putting a 3 in for the x. So we're going to say the function of 3 equals negative 5 times 3 minus 3. So the function of 3 equals negative 5 times 3, negative 15 minus 3, negative 18. So there's your function of 3. Function of 3 is equal to negative 18. Number 11, you do the same thing. Same notation. Evaluate it. List your answer. All right, number 12. Determine whether y varies directly with x. If so, find the constant of variation and write the equation. So a couple different things to do here. Both problems, you got two problems that are pretty much the same. So we got an x and a y, table of values, 618.54, 160, 160.72, 30.90.270. 810. For all of these, you take y divided by x. All right, so this is our y divided by x column. They should all be the same if it's a if they vary directly. 30 divided by 6, that's 5. 90 divided by 18, that's 5. 270 divided by 54, that's 5. 810 divided by 162, that's 5. So y over x is equal to your k if they vary directly. Your k needs to be the same every time. So this is determine whether varies directly. So you're going to say yes. 
Find the constant. K equals five. Write the equation. Your equation is that Y equals five times X. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. All your Y's are equal to X times five. Now, if you divide all of those, right, and you get a different K, that's just a no then, isn't it? If you look at number 13, you got another XY table, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we get 9, 11, 13, 15. So our y divided by x, which is equal to your k, 9 divided by 6, 1.5. Take 11 and you divide it by 7. That already equals 1.6. 13 divided by 8, well, that's 1.6. 15 divided by 9, that's 1.7. Hmm. I've only got my calculator rounding one decimal place. Constant's not the same. If the constant was the same, it would be exactly the same for all of these. So this is no. Don't vary directly. Number 14, you practiced these yesterday. You got negative 2y equals negative 3x. Determine whether y varies directly with x. If y varies directly with x, your equation, once you solve for y or for k, has to look like y equals k times x or y divided by x equals k. It's got to fall into one of those two formats. So if you divide both sides by negative 2, these are going to cancel. And y equals um, negative 3 divided by negative 2. You have to turn that into a positive. So there, yes, it falls into one of these two categories. So your y equals k times x. So yes, this is a yes. What is your constant? In this case, it's 3 over 2. In number 15, 8y equals 4x minus 26. If you divide everything by 8, Say again. It's already a no, isn't it? Because you got this extra out here, right? It doesn't doesn't fall into these categories. This category right here. This is only y equals something times x. That's it. No plus or minuses. This right here already already has this minus twenty six. This is a no. All right, and then 16, 17, and 18, you're going to be writing proportions. Find the value of y for the given value of x. So number 16, your y's over your x's. Y, remember, y over x has to equal y over x, and then substitute. So 160 over 32 has to equal what is y, so you're finding y, when x is 71. Crisscross multiply, so 32y equals 160 times 71. That's 1136. Going to divide by 32. 
So y equals 355. Number 17 is the same. And we'll just take a look at number 18 while we're here. You're told the distance traveled at a constant speed is directly proportion, proportional to the time of travel. Olivia traveled 50 miles in 2.5 hours. So miles to hours. She did 50 miles in 2.5 hours. We're going to set that equal to how many miles will she travel in 5.9 hours? So miles to 5.9. If her speed doesn't change. So we get 2.5 M equals 50 times 5.9. That's 295. Divide both sides by 2.5. So your miles is equal to 118. All right, that concludes your study guide for quiz number four. E-learners, if you don't have any questions, you're excused. If I don't hear from you or see any questions, I'm going to end this meeting. How do you take a test online? I've done it before. All right. Give me one second here. Let me stop this recording.